Okay. Okay. So we will start today in a child's pose. If you have a bolster, then let's bring it so that our toes are together and the knees are surrounding the bolster. And then you can drape your body over and turn your cheek to one side. And we'll switch sides halfway through the pose. We'll do this for about five minutes. So just let yourself fully release. Mm -hmm. hmm. Feel yourself breathing into the bolster. Let your shoulders relax completely, melting over the bolster. And I forgot to say, if you don't have a bolster, then you can just use pillows or blankets. It just makes something for you to lay on. Notice where your mind is at starting this practice. Notice if anything's popping up, if you're finding it maybe difficult to relax fully, or maybe if you're having no troubles, you can soak right in. Now consciously deepen your breath and envision the breath traveling all the way to your sit bones. And as you exhale, envision the breath coming back up from the sit bones, up the spine, up the shoulders, out the nose. You can keep breathing like that, feeling yourself fill up from the inhale, the nose, all the way down the back into the very base of your spine. And then exhaling back up the spine. And exhaling and releasing yourself fully, letting your breath release all the muscles as it travels through. You can now turn on to the other cheek, turn to face the other way, just so that our neck is even. Relax your toes. Relax your feet. Relax the ankles. Let go of any tension in the shin and the calves. Let your knees be soft. Let go of thigh and glutes. Each exhale that you take, allowing your sit bones to sink just a little bit closer to your heels. Relax your lower back and your sacrum. Relax the pelvic floor. Relax the lower belly. Relax the middle belly. And relax the upper belly, space beneath the ribs. Let all the muscles in your back 
this soften. Softening the chest, the breastbone, the collarbones, the shoulder blades, the arms, the elbows, the hands. Relax the jaw and the forehead and the neck. Take five more big exhales here. Maybe hearing your heartbeat through the bolster. Slowly, as you feel ready, you can begin to lift your head, walk your hands towards your seat, and gently peel yourself away from the bolster. Pausing for a moment. And then shifting your hips to either side of your feet. And we'll come to a seat in front of the bolster. Or your pillows and blankets, whatever. So you can line it up so that it's going the long way. And the very edge of it is in line with your sacrum. And just take a peek back, make sure it stays in line. So we're gonna be laying down on it, if you haven't guessed that. And we're gonna come into butterfly with our legs. So if you want to uh, support yourself under the knees, you can bring something there or just let them rest, whatever feels best. And then we'll slowly begin to walk your hands back and let your back start to melt over the bolster. Let your arms open with palms facing up. In a T-shape so that you really feel expansion across the chest. And breathe. If anything about this doesn't feel good at any point, this goes for the whole practice. And you can always allow yourself to gently make your way out of the pose. Things may start to feel uncomfortable they will start to feel uncomfortable and it can be an uncomfortable practice but discomfort is good we seek discomfort to find areas where we can improve but if at any point you feel a sense of pain and sharp pains or numbing or uncomfortable tingling then just allow your body to come to a place where that sensation goes away whatever's comfortable If you at any point want more support for your neck, you can always bring something else underneath there. Just about. So see the shape that your body is in right now. Even with the eyes closed, tracing your body in your mind's eye. Seeing the shape that your spine is making as it cascades over the bolster, almost like a waterfall, with the pool being at your sit bones. Feeling your heart as one of the highest points in your body right now. Letting all the blood and energy from your heart center cascade across the chest, down the upper arms, into the elbows, down the lower arms, and into the hands. Feel all the paths that you're making for energy flow. Feeling the heart pumping blood, sending it down your torso, down the ribs, the stomach, Cascading over the edge of the bolster into the hips. Coming 
bring down the leg into the feet. And the soles of your feet touching each other, completing the energy circuit. Instead of the energy just exiting our body completely through the soles of the feet as usual, the energy is now coming right back into the other foot. So circulating throughout your body. Let your forehead soften. And let your brain rest back with the back of the skull, relaxing the scalp the back of the neck, and the jaw. Relax the shoulders even more. Relax the hips even more. Feel the pulsing in your hands and in your feet. Notice that pulse running through your body. Ending in the hands and the feet, fingertips and the toes. Noticing as your body sinks in deeper and deeper, so gradually. Each breath allowing your body to become a little bit more comfortable in this position or surrendering a little bit more. Let's be here for five more full breaths. Each exhale, letting go of one thing. Very gently, as you feel ready. And begin to bring the arms back and forth the body alongside the pulse. And start to bring your elbows back underneath the shoulders, coming up onto the hands, walking the hands closer to your feet, grabbing the outsides of the knees, bringing them in together, and giving yourself a big hug. Pausing here. Altering the spine. And to further counter the spine, let's go ahead and straighten out your legs. Scooch your seat back and bring the bolster now in front of you on top of your legs. We're going to do caterpillar pose or uh, forward fold with the support of the bolster here. So we have something to lay on. And if you want to stack more things on top of this or yeah, bring, a, bring some extra height underneath your seat, that can be really nice. Just so that you get to a place where you naturally hinge at your hips. So if you're sitting on the floor and you're coming back like this, you just want to elevate the hips so that you can come forward. And then whenever you have a good setup going, you can just, uh, let's reach up the arms first. So inhale, reach your arms up high. Get really long in the spine. Feel the space up the side bodies through the fingertips. Breathe in. 
And then exhale, hinge at your hips, reach forward over the bolster, arms coming alongside the bolster, release the head and fold. So you can always bring your arms on top of the bolster or a block on there if you want to support the head further. And really want to make sure to release all the muscles in your legs. So it's not super important that your legs are touching each other really tight or that your feet are facing straight. Just see wherever your legs naturally fall. My feet naturally turn out, so my feet are turning out. That's wherever is the most natural and comfortable position for your legs. Relaxing the kneecaps and the muscles all around the knees. It's an intense stretch in the back, yeah. So you really want to focus on feeling the shape that you're making. Scan your body from the soles of your feet, up the backs of the legs, up the glutes, the lower back, the middle back, the upper back, the back of the neck and the crown of the head. So feeling how long the back of your body is becoming. Breathing into the back of your body. And as you take a deep inhale, feel the back body expanding. And as you exhale, feel the back body relaxing, surrendering. And you can let this be a test or a game of how much you can relax. Relaxing your jaw, the eyelids, the forehead and the eyebrows. So that you feel all the muscles in your face just hanging off of the bones. Notice how gravity and your breath is naturally taking you deeper into this pose without any forcing from you, just simply allowing. This is the mind space we want to shift into again, is one of allowance. So just being perfectly fine with the way your body is in the shape and just allowing it to be there. And without even trying to come deeper, you will notice over time, your body will naturally come deeper. Your body will naturally open up. Just with a little bit of patience. Staying with your breath, if you find the mind wandering. I'm staying with consciously relaxing your body parts. As you relax your stomach even further, feel the navel resting toward the, the spine. And feeling how that creates just a little bit more space in your lower back. Now, let's hold this for five more breaths. Really slowly, as you're ready, begin to roll up your spine and back up straight. And lift your arms back up again, slowly reaching up. Just feeling length in the spine. You can bring your hands back behind you and just lift your heart forward and up. 
to really counter the spine. Just a moment. We'll do a deeper counter. So you can remove the bolster from your legs to the pillows. And just bend the knees. You can either cross at the ankles and come forward or kick the feet back behind you. And we'll come into a tabletop position. If you would like to, when you arrive, you can take a few cat cows to just loosen up the spine a little bit before we come into another longer hold. Arching and curling the spine. Yeah. And lifting the heart, or letting the heart sink down and lift the sit bones up. And let your belly sink down. And lift the chin. Yeah. And then exhale, bring it in. Let's do one more round. Inhale, drop your belly, lift your gaze, lift your tailbone. Bring your heart forward and through, as if you could bring your heart through your upper arms. And then exhale and lift the back of your heart. And pull, as you exhale, you lift the back of your heart, pull the navel up to the spine, tuck your chin towards your chest, and tuck your tailbone down. Great, so you can come back to your neutral tabletop. And we'll now come into a heart melting pose. So you can walk your hands, you leave your hips exactly where they are, you just walk your hands forward and bring your uh, heart down. And you can always rest your head on, a, on the bolster if you want, or on a block or something, if it's uncomfortable. But if it's good, then good. Yeah, great. So you want to stay slightly engaged in your arms. This is a yin posture this time. So you really want to make sure to release all the unnecessary muscles. And lift the energy, or the energy is lifting up through the space in between your sit bones. So you almost feel a slight arch in the lower back. This is mainly an upper back stretch. So you can start to tuck the navel in towards the spine slightly just to support the lower back. You won't be here for quite as long as the other poses. No worry, you won't. Just come back to the breath. Every exhale, allow your heart to surrender a little bit more to the floor. Maybe audible exhales. Heart melting pose is really focusing on our heart, on the heart center. So feel the front of your heart surrendering and becoming heavier and heavier, sinking closer and closer mm -hmm. to the floor. But at the same time, it's also supported by the muscles around your heart. So feeling the back of your heart being supported. The back of or your shoulder blades are actively drawing a little bit closer together. And then surrendering into place on your exhale. Relax the toes and the ankles. Take three more big breaths here.
And then we're going to transition into our sphinx pose from here. So you can root down into the hands, start to tuck the tailbone down, and pull the navel in and up. As you roll the body forward and through, letting the, the hips and the pubic bone come to the floor. So you're just laying on your belly and in our sphinx pose. <clears throat> so you can bring your elbows so that when you look down at them, they're in line with your shoulders, but from a side view, they're just slightly, slightly in front of the shoulders. Like this. And you spread your fingers wide. And if you would like to totally rest your head here, you can bring a block so that your head rests down or just release the head here. Or you can keep it in line with your spine, whatever feels the best in your body. So you can bring your legs together so that your toes are touching and your big toes are rooting down into the mat. And this is going to be a little bit more um, passive than how we usually do it. So you don't have to focus on zipping up your legs and pushing down, but do focus on pressing your pubic bone down. That will help out the lower back. And do focus on slightly pulling your lower belly in toward the spine. And then you'll feel as if your heart could come through your biceps, come through the arms, and a slight pull on the floor so that, that the floor, you feel like you're dragging the floor towards your toes, that slight engagement. So it's the same as our regular sphinx pose, but we're a lot less engaged. We're engaging the same areas, but just being a little bit softer about it. Relaxing the face. Let the shoulders come together and down your back. Lifting the heart, lifting the collarbones, feeling broadness across the collarbones. Breathing. Feeling this shape that your body is in. Feeling again the blood rushing from your heart. Cascading down your torso into the hips. Feel all the blood rushing to your lower back, healing and energizing the lower back and the lower belly as well. Relax the jaw. Relax the forehead. Relax the glutes. And as you inhale, envision the crown of your head reaching toward the top corner of the room, so where the wall meets the ceiling. And then as you exhale, allow your body to settle, rooting down through the legs and the pubic bone. Inhaling and finding that slight length. And exhaling, settling into the pose. Three more rounds of breath. And then you can gently walk your, or Bring your hands forward and rest your head down on your hands, releasing the pose. You can bend the knees up toward the bum and just windshield wiper the feet back and forth a few times, massaging your belly, releasing your lower back. And we are ready. We will try to make our way back up to a tabletop position. So you can bring the hands underneath the shoulders, pull the navel up to the spine, 
and bring yourself back up. Table pop. Uh, we'll now come into thread the needle. You're going to bring the right arm underneath the left and bring your right side of your head, right ear, right shoulder to the floor. So feeling this really nice twist in the upper chest and the shoulders. And your top arm can be doing whatever it wants to do. It can reach forward if you want some more length in the left side of your body. It could reach back behind you if you would like more of a twist or a more exaggerated twist. Or it can just be resting on the ground wherever it's on your face. So taking deep exhales here. Again, seeing the shape that your body is in, even with the eyes closed, even if you can't see your body, imagining the shape that your body is in. Noticing how this feels in the body, noticing any sensations in the shoulders and the chest and in the heart. And not forgetting about your breath, letting your breath be your anchor throughout the practice. And let's take five more deep exhales. After your last exhale, you can unwind the arm if it was bound. And gently bring yourself back up to your tabletop by pressing into that left arm. Oh, I could cat cow once or twice just to reset. And when you're ready, we'll do that on the other side. So you can thread the needle, bringing the left arm underneath the right. Oh, maybe getting some pops in the shoulders and the chest. And just making sure to, just like in puppy pose, keeping your hips over your knees. I forgot to say that before, but I think you're doing it. And letting your head fully relax on the left side into the mat. Notice right away how it feels quite different on one side. Notice where you're at with this side. And if you have that right arm extended, really feeling the length from your right hip crease through the side body, through the ribs, the armpit, all the way through the fingertips. Feeling a gentle pull back in the right hip to even exaggerate that further.
We'll take about five more breaths on this side. Yeah, it looks much easier on that side, Dad. Awesome. And this time to come out of this, you can just unwind your left arm and we'll sit the hips down on the heels into a brief child's pose. And then when you are ready, you can start to come up to a seat on your heels. And shift your weight to either side, bring your legs down in front of you. We're gonna make our way down to lay on our backs. And we'll come into a supported bridge pose. So you can bend the knees, so to come to lay down. And to do this, you can use uh, your bolster, or I guess I'll start from the beginning. So you bring your uh, ankles in so that your fingertips can graze the backs of the heels or as close as you can. And then uh, as you inhale, lift your hips toward the ceiling and slide um, a bolster or block underneath the hips so that you can fully relax here. This is a bridge pose so is usually a very active, difficult pose. So I'm not doing that today. We are doing the passive version of this pose. Mm -hmm. And we do have some options with the legs. So you can leave them bent like this, if this feels good. Or if you'd like, you can straighten them and extend them and then you get a bonus little stretch down the psoas, the fronts of the thighs. But whatever feels best in your back, that can create a pinching sensation in the lower back for some people. So whatever feels the best for your body. And allow yourself to fully relax in this pose. So now feeling the change of, um, the change of level that the body is at than a lot of the other poses we did today where the heart was the highest. Now see that the heart is the lowest and the hips, and I guess the knees, but the hips are now higher than the heart and the head. So feeling this incline that the body is in. The energy is now dripping from your uh, pelvic region and up the torso and down into the heart. And the heart is, uh, the energy from the heart is coming down, or I guess up the chest, into the neck and into the head. So now feeling your head and your feet as the lowest points in your body. Your hands too. all the energy is traveling to those lowest points in the body. Relax your pelvic floor and relax the glutes. Relax your lower belly. Relax the stomach fully, letting the breath travel effortlessly in and out of the stomach. Feeling the stomach rise gently as you inhale and fall gently as you exhale. Relaxing the chest and the shoulder blades. Feeling the back of your head pulsing into the mat. Here. The 
feeling the palms of your hands and the soles of your feet. Again, softening the scalp and the brain, feeling the brain rest or the back of the scalp and the skull. Feeling the forehead expand as it softens. And feeling the triangle between both your eyes and your mouth getting wider and softer. Now for our last pose before Shavasana, you're welcome to stay here if this is good for you. Or if you would like to come into legs up the wall or up the air, you can just bring your legs up and you can keep them elevated or your hips elevated on the bolster. And perfect, yeah, you just fully relax all the muscles in your legs. So they don't have to be perfectly straight or anywhere. But you feel them relax into your hip sockets. Imagining that your legs are just waiting in water. Letting go of all the muscles and just allowing them to rest fully in their sockets. Feeling your hips being pinned down to your mat or to your bolster or block, simply by the weight of your own legs and gravity. Feeling them swaying, maybe feeling them shaking a little bit. Feeling them grow warmer and warmer with this change in blood flow. Feeling now your head really is the lowest point in the body. And all the energy is flowing from your feet down the legs, down the torso, or up the torso, up the neck, and into the head. Take three more breaths here. And then if you want to stay longer, of course you can. But if you would like to release into your Shavasana, you can gently allow your feet to find the floor. Lift your hips again toward the ceiling. Remove the support for your hips and bring your entire spine to the floor. Maybe hugging the knees in for a moment. Maybe doing some final last movements if you're not ready for your Shavasana quite yet. If you are ready, you're more than welcome to come there whenever. But if you want to do happy baby or any other pose, feel free. And then whenever you are ready, releasing into your Shavasana, allowing the legs to reach long on the mat. The legs are separated from each other, the arms separated from the body, feeling this five-pointed star shape that your body is in. As you exhale now, releasing yourself fully into this pose. The pose, most important pose of our practice. Pose where everything we just practice comes together and is solidified within our body.
now consciously relax the body further. And begin to activate the chakra as well. So starting at the toes, fully relax each of your toes and your feet. The ankles, the shins and the calves, the kneecaps and the backs of the knees. Feeling your lower legs and your feet completely soft. Relax your thighs, the fronts and backs, quads, the glutes, the hips, the pelvic floor. Feeling your whole lower body completely relaxed. The lower belly relaxes. Middle and upper belly fully relaxed. The chest, collarbones, and shoulders all soft. The rib cage softens as well. The arms and the hands and neck. And the skull. Feel the jaw release. Feel the eyeballs sinking back and down into the skull. And feel the forehead soften and expand. Now bring your attention to the very crown of your head, very tip of your head. And notice any sensations here, any pulsing sensations. Repeating to yourself, I am clearly connected to source energy. Bring your attention to the center of your mind, the space just beneath the crown and above the nasal cavity. I'm feeling that pulse come onto the forehead and the third eye. Repeating to yourself as you focus here, I trust my intuition. Tension scanning down the face and into the neck and the throat. Feeling the center of your throat and the pulse in here. Repeating to yourself, I am honest in my communications with myself and others. Awareness scanning into the heart center. Really tune into the rhythm of your own heart. Maybe hearing your own heartbeat. Repeating to yourself, I am compassionate with myself and others. I am grateful for all of my blessings.
awareness scanning into the solar plexus, about two inches above the navel. Feeling that heartbeat in your belly. Repeating to yourself, I am confident in who I am. I am worthy of great things. Awareness coming down now about two inches beneath the navel into the sacral chakra. Noticing any sensations here. And then repeating to yourself, I am joyful and creative. I am worthy of pleasure. And finally, awareness coming to the base chakra, the root chakra, the space between the sit bones at the very end of your spine. The coxer. Noticing any sensations here. And then repeating to yourself and feeling the sensation, I am safe and secure, and feeling how safe you truly are. Allow yourself to rest here for just a few more moments, allowing this practice to fully soak into your body. As always, if you want to stay longer, you can. If you are beginning to feel ready to come out of this, and allow my voice to guide you slowly. Beginning by Slowly deepening your breath. Gradually deepening the breath. Eventually feeling the air fill up all the way to your toes and your fingers. Big inhales and big exhales. You can start to wiggle the fingers and the toes. You rock the head gently side to side, massaging the back of the neck or the head. You can reach the arms overhead for a nice big morning stretch if you'd like. Getting the body as long as possible. When you're ready, bringing the knees toward the chest and rolling onto one side in a fetal position. Hmm. 
as you feel ready, gently bring up to your seat. Bring your hands to heart center. <laughs> Thank yourself for your practice. May this bring love to everything you do and everyone you see. Namaste.